Welcome to part two of this little mini-series I'm quickly producing, not to the usual standards because I'm doing them very quick, um, on solar farms. I'm trying to help a solar farm proposal or the people who are involved in it, the local people, in Wales, which is um, about 60 or 70 miles away from where I live. So that's what I'm trying to do. And in part one, we discuss the amount of power they produce. And I showed, for example, that when they claim 5,300 homes, even on their own calculations, they are wrong by a factor of, well, it's one fifth of that. So even on their own calculations, it's 1,060 homes if you're supplying the whole home with its power needs, its electric needs. Or you can say on their calculations, it's 5,300 homes. Yeah, fine, providing 80% of the power comes from gas, which, of course, the whole movement is trying to do away with, which is quite absurd. In truth, of course, they're claiming an amount delivered to the homes when they say, 5,300 or 1,060 homes. In practice, there are losses on the way. There are losses in transmission, and these are normally the big power lines. These are actually quite small, 1 or 2%, but the losses around the distribution network are much higher. And here is a table of some losses. So as you can see from this table, what they're saying is 1 or 2% loss during the initial step-up um, transformer. In actual fact, of course, the solar panels produce direct current, DC current, and that has to be changed by an inverter into AC current. There are losses there as well. And then 2 to 4% of the energy lost in the transmission lines, 1 or 2% of the energy is lost during step down transform from transmission lines to the distribution, and then 4 to 6% in the distribution. So when it arrives at your house, up to 15% of the energy is gone. And let's take it, let's be that kind, 10%. But that would reduce it into the hundreds, even on their own figures, for the amounts of houses supply. So the basic question is what power are they quoting? What they produce. But what they're doing is claiming what they put into your house. And that is wrong unless they allow for the transmission losses. So there's my question to them. Have you allowed for the transmission losses when you make these claims about what's been delivered to homes? So if they're claiming what they deliver to a home after the distribution losses in effect, because that's what they're claiming, they've got to take that into account. So I've written and asked them, do they take this into account? So far, I've received no answers to any of my questions or the previous video, which I gave to the developers. What I'd like to discuss now is the pollution aspect of solar panels. And I want to try and be very fair here. The fact is that a lot of cadmium, which is poisonous to humans, and lead, which is also poisonous, are in solar panels. And this runs off the solar panel. Now, the quantity that that runs off if the solar panel's not broken is quite small. And I'm being fair. If the solar panel suffers a breakage or anything, it's, it's very high. And it'll run off quite quickly into the ground. So there are pollution aspects to this whilst the solar farm is working. And that ground becomes contaminated with cadmium and lead. And that has to be taken into account. So you would think that the Welsh Government would insist on an environmental study. But as you can see from this clip now, it's going to be covered in the environmental impact. We haven't done any impact. We haven't done any impact. We haven't done it. No. Because we have not requested to do this. Because this is a scheme that sits on the that threat. So when we wrote to the Welsh Government, we asked if we needed to do one. And they came back to us. And that's all the very public document. See, that I not A scheme covering 53 acres involving power transmission lines or underground cables, landscaping all 53 acres, taking heavy machinery up and down narrow roads, maybe having to widen them, polluting the ground, does not require the developer to examine the environmental impact. I find that amazing, and I hope you do too. No, they did not insist on an environmental study. In fairness, the developer said, do we have to do one? And the government say no. Why? Because it's one set of rules for the green energy and one set of rules for other types of energy. I'll give you an example of that. You know, the wind farms are let off with all the consequences of their bird mincing practices or of their bat mincing practices. Actually, the bats don't even have to get near to the wind vane because the change in pressure is enough to burst their lungs. And just in one study in Germany alone, hundreds of thousands die every year. So 
This excuse that Greed's given, no environmental study, apply that to planning in Wales. I know people who, uh, they have to have a survey on newts, they have to have a survey on this and everything aspect, any wildflowers in the meadow, anything. So, but no, when it comes to green energy, nothing. Right, I'm investigating that further and I'll be contacting the Welsh Government, which I believe is Natural Resource Wales, the people who deal with it. But again, green energy is given, let's ignore all the negatives and do that. So there are these aspects, but a big aspect of solar pollution, of solar panel pollution, is how you dispose of the panels at the end of their life. A study here, published by Harvard Business Review, a major study finds that the waste produced by solar panels will make electricity from solar panels four times more expensive than the world's leading energy analysts thought. The economics of solar will darken quickly as the industry sinks under the weight of its own trash. So you can say there are serious problems to be considered here, but no environmental study is required according to our ever so green Welsh Government who have even declared a climate emergency when there isn't one. There is no proper efficient method of doing so. Now Europe dictates that you have to allow for this when you plan. So I've asked them what, what planning have they got, what, what planning have they got for end of life because the safe disposal really hasn't been cured yet. The world is building up huge stocks. I explain this in this short clip from one of my previous videos. In fact, what is needed to build solar panels is very high quality coal, which has to be used in great quantities to produce solar panels. Per unit of energy output, solar panels produce 300 times more toxic waste than nuclear power. Now take an area the size of a football pitch. We're going to stack the waste on that area from nuclear um, and from solar for the same amount of energy. And as a basis, we're going to take the 2016 world production of nuclear power. So in 25 years, how much waste would there be to what height over that football field from nuclear? And it's pretty high. It's as high as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So how high would the waste be if it was from solar um, in that 25 year period? Well, for the same amount of energy, it would not be as high as Mount Everest. It'd be twice as high. That is almost twice the height that you fly out on those jets when on holiday. Contrary to popular belief, lead and toxic cadmium can be washed out of solar panels in a matter of months by rain. And the manufacture of solar panels emits actually one of the most potent greenhouse gases on Earth, which is nitrogen triofluoride. It's 17,200 times more of a greenhouse gas than CO2. It may surprise some, but solar panels require quite a lot of sun to be efficient. And a study into the CO2 footprint of the manufacture and fitting of solar panels has concluded that above a certain latitude on Earth, they never pay back their CO2 footprint in their entire 25 year life. So places like the UK and Germany and so on are well above that and therefore the manufacture and production and fitting of CO2 besides being highly toxic in all sorts of ways that are not really being dealt with actually produce more CO2 than they save. And of course, just like wind power, solar power, especially in our country, is anything but reliable and it's intermittent. And it's got all the same problems that I've explained with wind power in fitting into our power grid. So there you can see there's a huge toxic waste problem with solar farm panels. Now, if you're going to abide by the rule in Europe, and I don't know whether it applies to us in the UK or not, but if you're going to abide by that, then you've got to have security of money to deal with it at the end of life. Now, the only proper way of doing that is some sort of bond right at the beginning, because the developer can just go bust. If the cost of making these this toxic waste safe is met by the developer, for frankly, a lot of them might not even start the farm in the first place. So to be sure they don't go bankrupt and leave you, the public, having to pick up the bill, I think a bond should be there right at the beginning. So I've asked the developer, is there any bond involved? We await an answer. 
So there's a number of aspects to the pollution here that matter. And I'll just give you some clips, some little things which you yourself can get from the internet. I am not trying to be alarmist. All I'm saying is this subject should be dealt with and there should be a proper environmental study. And I actually feel sorry for the developer on this because they did ask and they were told no need. Die Welt is a German uh, magazine. Die Welt reports that researchers in Stuttgart checked if toxic substances could be transported from the modules to the environment by water. And it wrote this. Contrary to early assumptions, the results show that hazardous materials such as lead or carcinogenic cadmium from broken pieces of solar modules could be completely washed out by rainwater over a period of several months. De Velt then adds that the EU banned the use of toxic heavy metals and solder by the electrical industry, but the solar industry was exempted on the behest of the solar lobby. The solar industry needs to be included in the ban as well, so that the global spread of heavy toxic metals can be curbed. This is the second in the series, and there will probably be yet another one to round up. After I received the response from the Welsh Government and from the developer,